Welcome back to the Dr. USP channel friends. I'm so happy to have you back here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you wanted to know about sampling, what is sampling, why do we do it and how do we do it, then you have come to the right place. Sampling is a process in statistical analysis in which a predetermined number of observations are taken from a larger population. The method for sampling from a larger population depends on the type of analysis being performed and it may include probability sampling and non-probability sampling. The sampling process begins with first describing what is the sampling frame. A sample frame consists of individuals or units from the population from which the sample is selected. The sampling frame can be of many types. It can be a list of registered voters, employment files, a list of drivers, license holders, a telephone directory, a list of students enrolled in a university and a list of organizations. Generally, there are two types of sampling, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. In probability sampling, each individual or unit has an equal chance of being selected. Probability sampling allows the researcher to calculate the sampling error. Sampling error is the difference between the characteristics of the sample and the characteristics of the population. Let's begin with probability sampling. The most popular probability sampling is the simple random sample. A simple random sample is a subset of the population in which each member of the subset has an equal probability of being chosen. A simple random sample is an unbiased representation of a group. Observations from a simple random sample can be generalized for the entire population. There are many ways of obtaining a simple random sample. We first assign a number to each potential respondent or sampling unit in the working population. Numbers are then chosen at random by a process that does not tend to favor certain numbers or patterns of numbers. There are many ways of generating random numbers. A predetermined number of units are then selected from the sample. Automatic random sampling is an adaptation of the simple random process. It is used when the population list is quite large and the sampling units cannot be conveniently numbered. In this case, we start from any individual or unit and then we take every 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th, any kind of a number that suits us. Stratified random samples are used when populations can be broken down into different subgroups or subsets. These groups are based on certain criteria. This could include age, gender and other such things. The elements from each subgroup or strata are then randomly chosen in proportion to the group's size versus the population. For example, we might divide uh, each group into groups of boys and girls and then we take equal number of representations from each of the group of boys and girls. A cluster or multi-stage sampling is used when there is a hierarchy of sampling units. This could include the hierarchy of state, districts, subdivision, blocks and so on. So in this multi-stage sampling process, we first randomly select the districts and in those districts we randomly select the subdivisions and then blocks within the districts. In the final stage, individual households are selected from those blocks in the sample. Probability sampling requires lots of time and money. This may not always be accessible to the independent researcher. Often, a non-probability sampling is used in these cases. In non-probability sampling, there is no certainty that the probability of selection is equal among the potential respondents. Every respondent does not have an equal chance of being selected into the sample. 
non probability samples do not provide the researcher with the ability to generalize survey data with a known degree of accuracy there are many ways of using the non probability sampling method it could be a sidewalk survey where you ask questions from random people on the sidewalk this type of survey can be carried out in shopping centers travel terminals at events and even in the workplace the snowball sampling is another important type of non probability sampling here the researcher first identifies a few respondents they are included in the sample and in turn they are asked to identify others who might qualify as respondents those respondents are then asked to identify further respondents the purposive sampling is another non probability sampling method here the researcher identifies the key respondents relevant to the research objectives responses from these key respondents are then included in the survey in the volunteer sampling method those respondents who respond to an email or notice or other such things put up to participate in the sample are included the sample size for a survey research depends on five major factors firstly it depends on the type of the project certain projects by definition require large samples it also depends on the purpose of the research and the complexity required the sample size also depends on the amount of error the researcher is willing to tolerate smaller samples have larger possible sampling error the size of the sample also depends on time and financial constraints it also depends on the sample size adopted by previous researchers on a similar topic thanks for staying on friends please don't forget to like share and subscribe and do send in your comments i will be back with another video very soon till then have a great time